Heavy shelling is continuing in Sudan's capital, Khartoum. Fighting is intensifying between the army and paramilitary rapid support forces. People there say looting is widespread. Neighbouring Chad has taken in the largest number of refugees from Sudan. Tens of thousands of people are fleeing violence in the western Darfur region. Sam Basravi joins us now from the town of Adre, that's on the border with Sudan. Zain, people arriving there in their crowds, what are they expecting from the authorities? Well, we're here, we are here, as you say, in Adre at the checkpoint between Chad and Sudan. And here we're seeing more and more people every day arriving from the city of Al Janaina, the capital of West Darfur, a place that people describe as the forgotten conflict, not only in the war in Sudan, but globally as a forgotten conflict where uh, there's been a cycle of continued violence for generations. I'm just going to step out of the way to show you the terrain that people have to cross to get into the safety, the relative safety of Chad. Uh, if you see just behind me that half-built bridge, uh, people underneath it. Beyond that, the white trucks, the communication tower, the people sort of gathering together, that is all Sudan. If we just cross into, if we just cross that little riverbed, that muddy riverbed, into Sudan, it would take just moments. Now, what we're seeing is uh, security of forces here, the, the border post uh, authorities are telling us that on any given day, 100 to 500 people arrive daily, most of them from Al Janaina. There are either Chadians who were living and working in Sudan, returning home, or mostly Sudanese refugees trying to get to safe haven, trying to get to safer places in Chad. We spoke to one woman who arrived and made her way to the area underneath that bridge. And what we're seeing is as soon as people arrive, the Chadian authorities carry out customs checks. They are, say that they are looking for weapons. They are desperate to make sure that there is not even a trickle of any kind of uh, the violence creeping into Chad. They don't want to see the conflict mushrooming here on this side of the border. People go through customs checks there usually brought in on horse and cart. Then they carry their belongings after they've been checked, load them into taxis, and move further into Chad, either to friends and family or to refugee camps for those that don't have any other place to go. One woman we spoke to said that she had to leave part of her family behind and come with a few relatives here. We keep hearing that narrative again and again of families torn apart. She described El Janaina as a place that she left today, as a place that is absolutely void of any kind of security apparatus, of any kind of governance. She said that there is violence and shooting on a daily basis. It continues even now. And and that she had to leave because she had no other choice. And those are the kinds of stories, the ongoing looting and the ongoing killing that is happening in Al Janaina. And we are hearing that it is spreading to other parts of Darfur and the governor, the regional governor of Darfur, just a couple of days ago, declaring his state, the state of Darfur in Sudan, as a disaster zone, calling for more international intervention, international aid groups to arrive and help the humanitarian crisis as soon as possible. OK, Zain, thanks very much for bringing us an idea of the situation there in Chad on the border with Sudan.